travel back in time with me, 1995, 1990. No, further back, further back. So we can see what it's like to shave in 1974. Ah, the 1970s, a time when America was fascinated by the 1890s. Men shaved with reproduction barber mugs, whipped up their lather with brand new old style shaving brushes, and delighted in aftershaves with martial arts themes. Our razor for the day will be a vintage 1974 Gillette Super Adjustable 109, also known as a Black Beauty. The Super Adjustable is a safety razor with a black resin-coated aluminum handle that uses a double-edged blade with an adjustment collar for setting the aggressiveness of the razor and a super cool mechanical screw open top to insert and remove blades. Speaking of blades, we'll be using a period correct Gillette Super Stainless, fresh out of its old, less than fresh metal case. You just seat the blade, twist the base of the razor, and your razor is ready to shave. Being the 1970s, there were all manner of old-timey reproduction shaving gear being sold, including these barber shop brushes with boar hair bristles. For our shaving cream, we'll be using a tube of vintage Williams Golden Yellow Lather. Williams manufactured Golden Yellow starting in the 1950s and discontinued the cream in the early 1980s. Williams' big claim was that they used copious amounts of lanolin and from the color and consistency of the cream, I believe it. And if you don't know what lanolin is, well, it's probably better that way. The box still has its 69 cent price tag. Real early barbershop shaving mugs had the mug's owner's name painted on the mug. On the 1970s reproductions, like this one, the mug actually states an occupation, letting you know it's a groovy 1970s repop. And no, we don't have high karate, but we do have black belt. Martial arts seemingly found their way into everything in the 1970s, including men's aftershave. Black belt was manufactured by Leeming and first launched in 1968. Okay, so let's get started. I'll wet the barbershop brush and apply some of the golden yellow cream. If you Google lanolin, you'll see that bulk raw lanolin looks an awful lot like this shaving cream. Blech! The reproduction mug is extremely close to an original in size and heft, and certainly works just as well for mixing up lather. I really like this brush as I prefer boar bristles anyway due to their stiffness when compared to badger, and the extra long handle keeps my fingers out of the lather. I usually have better luck working up a nice lather with the Williams than I did here. Still, it was fine and gave the razor a nice cushion to work with. Must be all that lanolin. Blech. What can I say about the Gillette Super Adjustable? These Gillette double-edged razors were popular for decades and for good reason. They're well-designed, indestructible, and great shavers. This 109 has a slightly longer than normal handle which improves the balance a bit and gives extra area for ensuring good grip. Before I started experimenting with straight razors and single-edge safety razors, I spent at least a decade shaving with nothing but a double-edged Gillette. If you're looking to get into wet shaving, I really can't recommend them highly enough. It would be hard to find any modern safety razor that's made as well as these vintage razors, and most likely you'd be looking at paying less than $40 for a nice vintage Gillette. Had no problem with the vintage blade either. The approximately 50 years it sat in its case has done nothing to dull its edge. Time to rinse off and prepare for the crowning 1970s glory. The Black Belt. It smells a lot like bay rum with some citrus overtones. I'm sure 1970s dads all across America enjoyed receiving a bottle for Christmas. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this little trip back through shaving history, and as always, happy shaving!